in this video i will talk about mesh analysis how to solve a circuit using mesh analysis method and show you an example of mesh analysis to solve a circuit when we have a circuit in which we have more than one energy source let's say in case of this circuit it becomes difficult for us to solve that circuit using normal series parallel circuit method in that case we utilize a method which is more convenient and very useful to solve a circuit that is our mesh analysis before going into the details analysis of mesh analysis you have to know three terminologies regarding mesh analysis first one is loop second one is mesh and third one is mesh current so what is loop loop is defined as a continuous and closed path in which no element is encountered twice now let me clarify this let's say in this circuit i have started my journey from this point let's say this is our a point as this is a junction let's say this is our b point as this is a junction this is our c point and this is our d point now let's say i'm moving like this a b c d a a b c d a see here if i go from a to b i will encounter this 10 volt source from b to c i will encounter this 5 ohm resistance from c to d this 7 ohm resistance and d to a we have a total short circuit see if i move along this total path i will not encounter any element more than once that's why i can call a b c d a will form a loop now let's say this is our junction e this is our junction f here if i move like this d to c c to e e to f and f to d see from d to c i will encounter this 7 ohm resistor c to e i will encounter this 23 ohm resistors e to f i will encounter this 12 ohm resistor and f to d there is a total short circuit so d c e f d see if i move along the total path i will not encounter any element more than once therefore this d c e f d will form a loop now consider this outer portion of this circuit outer portion that means a b c e f d a a b c e f d a c from a to b i will encounter this 10 volt source b to b to c i will encounter this 5 ohm resistor c to e i will encounter this 23 ohm resistor and e to f i will encounter this 12 volt source f to d short circuit d to a total short circuit see it will also form a loop because it is a continuous and closed path and we do not encounter any element more than once therefore i will get total three loops here a b c d a d c e f d and a b c e f d a now what is mesh mesh is also a loop but this mesh has a speciality it will not contain any other loop inside it see if i move along this loop a b c d a this is a loop and this is also a mesh because see in this loop we don't have any other loop so this will be a mesh or if i move like this d c e f d this will also form a mesh but a b c e f d a a b c d a b c 
E F D A will not form a mesh because this loop A B C D A B C E F D A will form two independent meshes inside it. So we will have only two mesh here. What is mesh current? See when I will get A B C D A. Let's say that this will be our loop number one. D C E F D. Let's say this will be our mesh number two. Now what is the mesh current? Mesh current is an assumed current inside the mesh, which will remain same throughout the mesh. Let's say I have considered a current I1 as our mesh current inside mesh 1. Therefore, this mesh current will re remain same throughout this loop. And let's say I, I have assumed it in clockwise direction. Let's say this is as this is our mesh number 2. I have considered mesh current 2 as I2 in case of mesh 2. This is an assumed current and this current will flow throughout the mesh and it will remain same inside mesh 2. Now let me show you an example of mesh analysis. Find the mesh currents and the current through 7 ohm resistor using mesh current method. I have to find the mesh currents in this circuit and the current through this 7 ohm resistor. These are the steps I will follow to perform mesh analysis in a circuit. First one is that identify the number of meshes in the circuit. Let's say I denote this terminal with A, this with B, this with C and this with D. Therefore, you will see our A, B, C, D, A will form a mesh because inside this we will not have another mesh or loop. Therefore, it will be our mesh number 1. After that, see D, C, E, F, D. D, C, E, F, D. It is also a mesh because we in because inside it we will not get another mesh so it will represent our mesh number 2 so these are the two meshes in our circuit assign a mesh current to every mesh in clockwise direction now I will assign mesh currents in the meshes in clockwise direction in loop number 1 or mesh 1 the mesh current is I1 in mesh number 2 the mesh current is I2 and I have assigned mesh 1 and mesh 2 currents in clockwise direction so I am done with step number 2 after that I have to assign the polarity of a resistor according to the direction of mesh currents see a resistor is a non-polar element that means it does not have any positive or negative side the direction from which current will be entering will be its positive side and the direction from which the current will be leaving will be its negative side okay so in case of this 5 ohm i1 will be entering from this direction so this terminal should be positive and this terminal should be negative because loop current is flowing in this direction in case of this 23 ohm this terminal should be positive and this terminal should be negative because see this loop current will be flowing from this direction and leave this 23 ohm resistance in this direction now you will see this 7 ohm resistance will be placed between loop 1 or mesh 1 and mesh 2 S therefore i have to indicate the polarity of this 7 ohm resistor in both sides see i1 will be entering from this direction and leaving the 7 ohm in this direction so this terminal should be positive and this terminal should be negative and i2 will be entering from this direction and leaving from this direction so this terminal should be negative and this terminal should be positive so i am done with our step number 3 after that I will apply KVL to every mesh in the clockwise direction. I will apply KVL in every mesh in clockwise direction. Okay. Before applying KVL, let me talk about the sign convention of KVL. If I encounter an element and its negative terminal first and positive terminal later, therefore its voltage will be positive value. If I encounter the positive sign first and negative sign later, its voltage will have a negative value. Okay and if i encounter a resistor like this which is placed between mesh 1 and mesh 2 see i1 will be flow flowing in this direction and i2 is flowing in this direction as i don't know the value of i1 and i2 therefore the current should be i1 difference i2 that means as their unknown value it could be i1 minus i2 or 
I2 minus I1 depending upon wh which current is greater okay now if I apply KVL in mesh 1 I will assume this I1 is greater than this I2 therefore I will take I1 minus I2 that means the current flowing through this 7 ohm resistor and when I will be in loop number 2 or mesh 2 I will assume I2 is greater than this I1 there I will consider the current through the 7 ohm resistor as I2 minus I1 now I will apply KVL to each and every meshes in the circuit let's say I will apply KVL in mesh 1 that means A B C D a from this a terminal to b terminal i will encounter this 10 volt source and its negative terminal first positive terminal later therefore its voltage will be positive plus 10 after that i will encounter this 5, five ohm resistor from this b to c and its positive terminal first negative terminal later therefore its voltage will have negative sign see the current that is flowing through this resistor is i1 and the value of this resistor is 5 we calculate the voltage drop across any resistor by multiplying current with the value of resistor current into resistor V equal to I R so 10 minus 5 I 1 from C to D I will encounter the 7 ohm resistor when I will consider the 7 ohm resistor as I am applying KVL in mesh 1 I will take the polarity in the left side or the polarity inside mesh 1 see I will encounter the positive terminal first negative terminal later therefore its voltage will also be negative see I1 is flowing in this direction I2 is flowing in this direction therefore I will consider this I1 will be greater than I2 therefore current through this 7 ohm resistor as will be equal to I1 minus I2 and multiply this current with the value of resistor 7 will be equal to 0 now if I simplify this equation I will get 5 I1 minus 7 I1 plus 7 I2 equal to 0 from which I can write minus 12 I1 plus 7 i2 equal to minus 10 this will be our equation number 1 now I will apply KVL in mesh number 2 from this D to C I will encounter the 7 ohm resistor and its positive polarity first negative polarity later therefore its voltage sign will be negative minus 7 see I2 is flowing in this direction and I1 is flowing in this direction therefore I will take I2 minus I1 as I am in mesh number 2 I will assume mesh 2 current is greater than mesh 1 current after that I will encounter this 23 ohm resistor see the current that is flowing through this 23 is I2 so I will take minus I minus 23 I 2 because I will encounter positive terminal first and a negative po terminal later after that I will encounter this 12 volt source and its negative terminal first positive terminal later therefore its voltage will be plus 12 equal to 0 equal to minus 7 I 2 plus 7 I 1 minus 23 i 2 plus 12 equal to 0 from which I can write 7 i 1 minus 30 i 2 equal to minus 12 see I have equation 1 and equation 2 if I solve equation 1 and equation 2 I will get our loop current i 1 equal to 1.2 3 4 ampere and mesh 2 current I2 equal to 0 0.688 ampere now see I have to calculate the current through the 7 ohm resistor let's say I denote that current with I through 7 ohm you see I1 is flowing in this direction and this I1 has a value of 1.234 
and this I2 is flowing in this direction. This I2 has a value of 0 0.688 ampere. So our I through 7 ohm will flow in this direction and it will be equal to I1 minus I2. 1.234 minus 0 0.688. which will be equal to 0 0.546 ampere